My daughter came down with a uh, bad case of psoriasis. Uh, she was going to a dermatologist who was treating her and she'd been through a number of treatments and nothing was working. Uh, and so finally I said to him, who is the leading psoriasis expert in New York City? And he said, it's uh, Dr. Martin Carter at uh, Rockefeller University. She wound up spending a month in the hospital the first time. And uh, I remember I went over to pick her up and I said to the nurse, where do I go to pay the bill? The nurse said, there's no, there's no charge, it's a research hospital. And so I went back to my office and I got out my checkbook and I sent a check to Marty Carter for what I thought a month in the hospital would cost. And uh, not surprisingly, uh, about two weeks later, I got a call from the chairman of the board of Rockefeller who said he'd like to come over and see me. And uh, that was the beginning of what now has been a 20 year relationship with the, uh, with the university. Rockefeller University was formed in 1901 by John D. Rockefeller Sr. Uh, and the reason it was formed was that uh, we had reached this, the point in the state of medicine where you could diagnose what was wrong with people, uh, but we had no ability to, to stop the disease that they had from killing them. Rockefeller had an advisor named Gates, and so Gates came up with the idea of bringing together the best and the brightest uh, in one location to basically study how do we interact with disease and how do we stop disease. My own laboratory studies a rare group of patients who, amazingly enough, have an immune response against their own cancers. We're able to discover something that people haven't seen before, which is human beings have a natural ability to get rid of cancer. Not only do the best scientists want to come here, but the best students, the best fellows, the best clinicians want to come work here. This is the number one place in the country, possibly the world, to do this kind of research. So I'm privileged to have an absolutely spectacular group of people working with me in the laboratory now uh, and hopefully in the future. Rockefeller is important to what we're doing because it's one of the only places in the world that actually prizes risk-taking and has allowed us to do completely improbable scientific experiments that we just wouldn't be allowed to do at any other university. Mosquito disease transmission is a, an enormous problem in the developing world. Malaria kills a million people a year. Several hundred million people are sick and infected with the malaria parasite to try to find out what that substance is that's either attracting or repelling mosquitoes. And that substance, if bottled, could be an incredibly important tool in preventing mosquito disease transmission. Rockefeller is just an incredibly exciting place to be because of the strength of the basic sciences on the one hand and the commitment that's always existed here to taking that knowledge and translating it into medicines that can help patients. We need to identify those with passion and with the intellectual capabilities to back up that passion to go into medicine and science. Biomedical research is our only focus when we're here, as opposed to being in a large medical center where often your research competes with the time that's spent in clinical care. Rockefeller is second to none in providing that protected time. Obviously, I'm very thankful for the investment that Rockefeller has made in me. You know, as part of the Clinical Scholars Program, I had three years of protected time that gave me enough time to focus on my research, generate data. Now I'm an NIH-funded investigator, and that was uh, not a small accomplishment, and I could do it thanks to the investment that Rockefeller made. Rockefeller University is very unusual in that it is not divided up into departments reflecting different disciplines. Because departments can form barriers between different sorts of research workers. What we have here, no barriers between the basic researchers and the clinical researchers. Having no departments is critical. Every head of lab, tenured or not tenured, reports to the president of the university, period. This is really the golden age of disease research, translational medicine, and drug discovery, and I think that medicine is going to be transformed profoundly in all of those different areas. I think we have an outstanding opportunity here. We have a small institution with world-class people in it, and I think we need to continue to think aggressively about what else we can be doing at Rockefeller and, and how do we expand beyond our current scientific horizons. My family have been involved in a number of 
enormously worthwhile philanthropies. Uh, but I believe that perhaps the most significant is the Rockefeller University and Rockefeller Hospital in, in that connection. I think going back uh, even to grandfather and father, they would probably agree with that. Somebody asked me, well, how can you keep talking about Rockefeller? You don't even work there. You're at Harvard. What's that all about? And uh, I once said uh, to a group there, well, I guess it sounds a little bit like Macy's complimenting gimbals. Uh, and most people don't understand what I mean when I say that anymore. But I do feel that it is a place that sets a standard. It is my single most important philanthropic association. It's an institution that has had a large impact on my family. Uh, it's been a very important place to me for a long time. I am totally honored to be chairman of the board. And it's a place that I think the world of and, and want to do as much as I can to help.